Hello and welcome to this video walkthrough where we will be exploring a Jupyter Notebook that fine-tunes the Llama 2 language model using Clora and Bits and Bytes techniques on a T4 GPU. This notebook is designed to load a dataset, set training parameters, train the model, save the trained model, and generate text using the trained model. Additionally, it reloads the model in FP16 and merges it with low RA weights. Finally, we will explore how to push the model to the Hugging Face Hub. So, let's dive in and see how this notebook works. Welcome to this video walkthrough where we will be exploring a Jupyter Notebook that fine-tunes the Llama 2 language model using Clora and Bits and Bytes techniques on a T4 GPU. In this current cell, we have some markdown that provides some information about the notebook and its creator. The markdown explains that this notebook is designed to fine-tune the Llama 2 language model, set training parameters, train the model, save the trained model, and generate text using the trained model. Additionally, it reloads the model in FP16 and merges it with low RA weights. Finally, we will explore how to push the model to the Hugging Face Hub. The next block of code installs some necessary packages for the notebook to run but we will discuss that in the next cell. So, let's move on to the next cell and see what it does. In this current cell, we have a line of code that installs some necessary packages for the notebook to run. These packages include Accelerate, Peft, Bits and Bytes, Transformers, and Trail. These packages are essential for fine-tuning the Llama 2 language model, setting training parameters, training the model, saving the trained model, generating text using the trained model, reloading the model in FP16, merging it with low RA weights, and pushing the model to the Hugging Face Hub. In the next cell, we will see some code that imports some necessary libraries and loads the dataset, but we will discuss that in the next cell. So, let's move on to the next cell and see what it does. In this current cell, we have some code that imports necessary libraries and packages for the notebook to run. These packages include OS, Torch, Datasets, Transformers, Peft, and Trail. These packages are essential for fine-tuning the Llama 2 language model, setting training parameters, training the model, saving the trained model, generating text using the trained model, reloading the model in FP16, merging it with low RA weights, and pushing the model to the Hugging Face Hub. In the next cell, we will see some code that sets some parameters for the model that we want to train from the Hugging Face Hub, such as the dataset to use and the fine-tuned model name. But we will discuss that in the next cell. So, let's move on to the next cell and see what it does. In this cell, we are setting parameters for the model that we want to train from the Hugging Face Hub. We have specified the model name, dataset name, and fine-tuned model name. We also have Clora parameters, which include low RA attention dimension, alpha parameter for low RA scaling, and dropout probability for low RA layers. Additionally, we have bits and bytes parameters, which include activation of 4-bit precision base model loading, compute D-type for 4-bit base models, quantization type, and activation of nested quantization for 4-bit base models. Lastly, we have SFT parameters, which include maximum sequence length to use, packing of multiple short examples in the same input sequence to increase efficiency, and device map to load the entire model on the GPU zero. In this cell, we are setting various parameters for training our model. We have specified the output directory where the model predictions and checkpoints will be stored, the number of training epochs, and the batch size per GPU for both training and evaluation. We also have parameters related to gradient accumulation, gradient checkpointing, maximum gradient norm, learning rate, weight decay, optimizer, learning rate schedule, and warm-up ratio. These parameters help us optimize our model during training. Lastly, we have parameters related to grouping sequences into batches with the same length, saving checkpoints, and logging. These parameters help us monitor the training process and make adjustments as needed. In the next cell, we will load the tokenizer and model with Clora configuration and check GPU compatibility with Float16. 
In this cell, we are loading the tokenizer and model with Clora configuration. We first set the compute data type using the getiter function from the torch library. Next, we check if the compute data type is torch.float16 and if we are using 4-bit precision base model loading. If both conditions are met, we check if the GPU supports float16 by getting its capability using the torch.cuda.get underscore device underscore capability function. If the major capability is greater than or equal to 8, we print a message indicating that the GPU supports float16 and we can accelerate training with BF16 equals true. In the next cell, we will load the dataset and set the bits and bytes configuration, which includes parameters for 4-bit precision-based model loading, quantization type, and nested quantization. In this cell, we load the dataset that we will use to train our model. We also set the configuration for bits and bytes, which includes parameters for 4-bit precision-based model loading, quantization type, and nested quantization. This configuration will be used when we load the base model in the next cell. In this cell, we load the base model using the auto model for causal function from the hugging face library. We pass in the model underscore name variable, which specifies the name of the fine-tuned model we want to use. We also pass in the bnb underscore config variable, which contains the configuration for bits and bytes that we set in the previous cell. Finally, we pass in the device underscore map variable, which specifies the device we want to use for training. After loading the model, we set two configuration parameters. First, we set use underscore cache to false, which disables caching of model outputs during training. Second, we set pretraining underscore TP to 1, which specifies the type of pretraining task to use for the model. In this cell, we load the llama tokenizer using the auto tokenizer dot from underscore pretrain function from the hugging face library. We pass in the model underscore name variable, which specifies the name of the fine tuned model we want to use. We also set trust underscore remote underscore code to true, which allows the tokenizer to download additional code from the internet if needed. After loading the tokenizer, we set the pad underscore token to the EOS underscore token, which specifies that the end of sequence token should be used for padding. We also set padding underscore side to right comma which fixes a weird overflow issue with FP16 training. Next, we load the low RA configuration using the lore config function from the Yora library. We pass in several parameters, including lora underscore alpha, lora underscore dropout, r, bias, and task underscore type. These parameters specify the alpha value for low RA, the dropout rate, the number of attention heads, the type of bias to use, and the type of task we are training the model for. In this cell, we set various parameters for training our model. We create a training arguments object and pass in parameters such as the output directory, number of training epochs, batch size, gradient accumulation, gradient checkpointing, maximum gradient norm, learning rate, weight decay, optimizer, learning rate schedule, warm-up ratio, and parameters related to grouping sequences into batches with the same length, saving checkpoints, and logging. These parameters will be used to train our model in the next cell. In this cell, we set the parameters for supervised fine-tuning of our model using the strainer function. We pass in the model, dataset, pef underscore config, max underscore sec underscore length, tokenizer, and training underscore arguments. Then, we train the model using the trainer.train function and save the train model using trainer.model.save underscore pretrain new underscore model. We also receive some warnings related to the tokenizer and checkpointing, but these can be ignored for now. In the next cell, we will see how to visualize the training progress using TensorBoard. In this cell, we are loading the TensorBoard extension and then running it to visualize the training progress of our model. TensorBoard is a tool that helps us monitor and analyze the performance of our model during training. In the next cell, we will be ignoring some warnings and running a text generation pipeline with our trained model. We will be providing a prompt and generating text based on that prompt using our model. But for now, let's focus on this cell and how we are using TensorBoard to monitor our model's training progress.
In this cell, we are ignoring some warnings and running a text generation pipeline with our next model. We are providing a prompt, which is a question, and generating text based on that prompt using our model. The generated text will be printed out. But before we move on to the generated text, let's talk about the warnings. These warnings are related to the fact that we have modified the pre-trained model configuration to control generation. This is a deprecated strategy and will be removed soon, so we should use a generation configuration file instead. Now, let's move on to the generated text. The prompt we provided was what is a large language model? And the model generated a response that explains what a large language model is and provides some examples. Large language models are used for natural language processing tasks such as text classification, sentiment analysis, and machine translation. They are also used for generating text, such as chatbots, and for generating creative content, such as poetry or stories. The generated text also provides some examples of large language models, including BERT and LLAMA. In the next cell, we will be emptying the VRAM. But for now, let's focus on the generated text and how we used our model to generate it. In this cell, we are emptying the VRAM, which is the memory on the GPU that stores data for our model. We do this by deleting the model, pipeline, and trainer objects, and then running the garbage collector twice to free up any remaining memory. This is important to do before reloading the model in the next cell, which we will do in FP16 and merge it with low RA weights. But we'll talk about that in the next video. In this cell, we are reloading the model in FP16 and merging it with low RA weights. We do this by first loading the base model using the auto model for causal dot from underscore pretrain function, which sets the model to use half precision floating point numbers. We then create a new model using the pef model dot from underscore pretrain function, which takes the base model and the new model as inputs. Finally, we merge and unload the model using the model.merge underscore and underscore unload function. We also reload the tokenizer using the auto tokenizer dot from underscore pretrain function, which sets the padding token to the end of the sequence and the padding side to the right. This is important to do before saving the tokenizer in the next cell. In this cell, we have some code that is currently commented out. This code is related to using Hugging Face to store our model. If we want to use Hugging Face, we need to first log in using the exclamation mark Hugging Face cli login command. After logging in, we can push our model and tokenizer to the Hugging Face hub using the model.push underscore to underscore hub and tokenizer.push underscore to underscore hub functions. These functions take in the new model and tokenizer as arguments and also have an optional use underscore temp underscore dear parameter that we can set to false if we don't want to use a temporary directory. However, for now, we don't need to worry about this code as it is currently commented out and we will be focusing on the next steps in the upcoming cells. And that concludes our video walkthrough on how to empty VRAM, reload the model in FP16, merge it with low RA weights, and reload the tokenizer. We also briefly discussed how to push the model and tokenizer to the Hugging Face Hub. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. Thank you for watching.